Yes, we are live. All right. Cheers. Huzzah. Do I raise my glass to you? Cheers. And welcome to season two. I guess we can call it season two of the tavern because we did take a little hiatus, a uh, summer hiatus. And now we're back. We're back in October, and I thought October 1st would be a good time to come back. I originally did want to come back um, in August, but uh, but that, I don't know, I just things just got really busy. And I did do, I think, a very, very uh, brief one um, here in, I think it was back in July. I did a very, very brief one. Um, but yes, April has joined us. Um, yeah, so I'm kicking off uh, this uh, season uh, with uh, one of my favorite people in the living history world, um, April Thomas. So yeah, she's in the house. Yes. So um, yeah, if you could uh, just uh, send a request to join and I will, okay, and I will approve of you. Okay, here we go. There's always that little moment of panic there. Hey! Hi! How are you? I'm good, oh Tiffany. God, it's great to see you. It's great to see you too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How have hey. you been? I'm hanging on. I have lots hanging of support. Yeah. yeah, I've got lots of support, so I'm doing okay. I'm hanging yeah. on. Yeah, aw, <laughs> yeah, but it's really, really <laughs> great to see you, and it's like, I, you know, I'm really happy to have you on, Jordan, Thank so, you. hey, yeah. thanks for joining us, um, yeah, but, um, but yeah, I'm just really, really excited to be doing uh, this new season, I kind of wanted to, I'm, I'm attempting to make things look a little bit more taverny, um, just to kind yeah. of give it a different vibe, as opposed to me sitting on my couch. But, you know, that was a good place to start, you know. Oh, because, of course. Well, yeah, because, well, they started, I kind of started doing these live streams in quarantine because I wanted to do more lives. I started doing them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And, hey, Michael, how are you? <laughs> um, I started doing them on Facebook, and then they slowly just evolved into me, you know, the tavern live stream and me having yeah. people on. And, yeah, so. That's oh, awesome. Gorgeous. I love your outfit. It's gorgeous. I went a little Thank retro you. Halloween, but I love the gothic because, okay. like, I was either going to, like, super gothic or, like, Halloween retro, and I got this dress last year and couldn't go out and wear it anywhere. So I was like, I'm getting it out. I'm wearing this yeah. one. Hey, yeah, why not? <laughs> you know? So, um, so, yeah. So I do have to – I'm going to move my phone up just a tad. Okay. I have to mind the candles, though. Yeah, um, me too. I Although mine are, mine are fake. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. They're fake. They're great. Yes. Hey, John. Thanks for joining us. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> now, this, this isn't done, okay, because I'm going to be – Oh, I love it. I love it. You like? Yeah. I love it. Yes. Home, homegrown pumpkin all. It, I'm so proud. It's the only pumpkin this year. It is the only pumpkin. And it's perfect. Oh. But it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. I love it. It's such a perfect pumpkin. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, but I do. I'm going to give a couple of shout outs here before we begin. Um, Go for it. I, 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 you remember uh, me talking about uh, Fanny's Boozy Jams and Jelly. Hey, Ghost oh, yes. Inspector Greg. Hi, John. Again, good evening. Um, yeah, I think I think they're referring to themselves as um, now because they've expanded their merch. Um, Fanny's um, Battlefields Jams and Teacup Delights. And oh, yeah. Look, they're making candles now. This is called a witch's collection. Oh my gosh. And it smells absolutely heavenly. They sent me this lovely care package of all this stuff. I did an unboxing of it because they're that awesome. Oh and my gosh. Course, yeah. And of course, you know, one of my favorite candle companies, uh, Mythology Candles, their Alchemist candle. Uh, it's absolutely lovely. And what I'm drinking in here um, is uh, Fanny's uh, Pumpkin Pie Tea. It was, um, it's from their, uh, the Battlefield Jams and Jellies and their Teacup Delights. Uh, they have a pumpkin pie tea out right now. I don't know how well you can see it out between the candles in here. I don't know. I'll figure <laughs> no, this out. No, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. I can see everything. Drinking the pumpkin pie and Witch's Brew tonight. Their Witch's Brew is really good. That's it, not, you know what? Witch's Brew, anything I've ever had. I've had coffee from at least yeah. three or four company, companies that they call Witch's Brew, and it's always amazing. So I'm yeah. sure it's good. I'm sure it's good. Yeah. 
anything called Witch's Brew ends up being really, really amazing. So yeah. I, even though I'm not drinking it right now, I'll probably drink it later on in the month uh, for another live stream. But uh, this is delicious. It has like um, peppermint, spearmint, honey bush, uh, chamomile, calendula, and rose. Oh. So it's delicious. And of course, this is yeah. like pumpkin, cinnamon, very, very delicious. And um, also, I don't know if you've ever met Tim Man Roy. He goes to um, living history and reenactment events. He's a mm -hmm. tinsmith. I probably and have. I have I... Mm -hmm. added That's this gorgeous. To my setup. Oh my gosh. It's a, a lantern. Oh my gosh. Isn't it lovely? It's and beautiful. There's an actual candle in there. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I bought it at Fort Henry Days uh, back in. Um, September so um, when I performed with Wayward Companions there and uh, yeah and then um, last but not least because people ask me like last time I wore this lipstick in a live stream what color it was and it's a uh, Besame um, Noir Red they're 1930 um, it's like basically based on a uh, color worn in 1930 so I yeah, love Besame so, I think we're all into Besame now because I, I got all of us into like the historical realm are into Besame oh you know? absolutely you have to be because when you realize that she like okay plug for her she's an amazing person like she they hand make the lipsticks just like they hand mold them like yeah. they used to and when you look at how well they turn out you you're like oh my gosh this is a, you never want to go back to, to normal oh, yeah. you like, know grocery store lipstick ever again go back. <laughs> you know? I know, right yeah you're like um you know? yeah, yeah that stuff that stuff's garbage i'm gonna use these so yeah best is it best it's bestmade.com right but they have like every 30s and 40s lipstick you can yeah. think of and they're gorgeous they, i think it's beautiful it's very yeah. you've got like the whole snow white like thing you're rocking the whole snow white i love it mm -hmm. it's great yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. And um, yeah, these earrings I actually got at Penn's Colony. I thought they were very Celtic looking. Um, oh, yeah. Beth Moore, uh, she's a uh, sunburst. It's called, I think it's called Sunburst Designs. Um, makes beautiful, beautiful earrings. I thought, like I said, they had a very Celtic look to them. So I was mm -hmm. just like, I'm yeah. there. So. <laughs> I don't know if you're drinking anything, but I yeah. am. I actually, I, I figured, you know, wine. I haven't had red wine. I'm really not supposed to drink anything, but you know, a little red wine is going to be really good for. You know, I hear it's good for your liver. And yes. <laughs> there you go. So, huzzah, dears! Huzzah, cheers, cheers, everyone! Cheers. And thank you all for joining. It's so Hi, nice Teresa. to see. Thanks for yeah. joining. <laughs> Teresa's in the bud. I see Paul's in there too. You all, it's so nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming. And we'll try to tell you some fun, spooky stories. So I know, right? And and hey, for those of you watching, if you have any experiences of your own, you know, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Oh, cheers, Teresa. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Aww. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear. I mean, I, I, I'd love to hear them. I'm sure April, I don't want to speak for April, but I'm sure she'd love to hear them too. So. Oh my gosh. Yes, because that's the sort of thing I feel like um, it's it's one of those things in life and you don't often like blurt out something that's happened to you that's been, I, you know, paranormal or unusual or yeah. weird. But usually when you do, someone around you will go, well, actually, there was this time when yeah. I had this thing happen. And that's that's usually how these things happen. So, mm -hmm. you know, even oh, if it absolutely. wasn't something, yeah, there's always good stories. So like, yeah, throw comments in there. Let us know because yeah, it's let funny. Us know, like, what, what you might have experienced, too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I know you have um, worked at your share of living history events and sites and everything. Like, what? Like, what have you experienced? So I thought about this yesterday, and and a few really good ones came to mind, and some silly ones. So I'll start with the silly ones because they're hilarious. Like, yeah. So when people say, "Well, you know, there's no such thing as the paranormal," or like, you know, you're just whatever. I always go to this one where I'm like, well, there's, you know, you should, you should just never be too quick to judge. But the right. first site that I grew up at, which was the Colonial Pennsylvania Plantation, was mm -hmm. a beautiful site. And it was a huge living history working farm, right? And mm -hmm. there was a full-time farmer always living there. And um, right. down the years, there have been several, like, they would be, they would work for several years and then sort of give up, you know, they'd be for like six or seven years and then they move on. Yeah. And so um, the two previous to, to me working there had some, some good stories that kind of got passed down from farmer to farmer. Well, when I was there, there was a farmer there named Lloyd, and he was a lovely man. And mm -hmm. he used to say to me, because I was very, I mean, I grew up on this site, so he was always, like, careful not to, you know, influence the kids and say anything too scary. Oh, but 
you know, at one point he would he would sort of say, you know, the things that would happen to him when he would lock the house up and how things would get moved. And mm -hmm. the family that lived in that house were, were uh, their name was Pratt. And so we used to joke that when something got moved around, it would be Mrs. Pratt because she didn't Mrs. like Pratt, where we left yeah. things, right? Yeah, Mrs. Pratt would move this, Mrs. Pratt would move that. Mm -hmm. Well, around the year, I think it was like 1998, 99, when Swiffer Claws, you know, the Swiffer Cleaners were like new. Yeah. Okay. The Swiffers would end up, like the box of Swiffers, would get moved from like one part of the building into like the freezer. She didn't know what they were. She would move them into the freezer. The ghost would literally, I'm telling you, it, it would happen like so many times. People thought somebody was into the freezer. Yeah, because our joke was we thought it had to be the ghost because she didn't know what they were. She just like was trying to get our attention. But for a yeah. while there, all the interpreters thought it was a joke. We thought someone was like spoofing us or playing a joke. Right. On each other. Maybe in the end they were, but it was the most hilarious thing where this, these like random things would end up in the freezer. But for this period of time, it was just like the Swiffer box, the Swiffers. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so crazy, right? It's like, where are the Swiffers? Yeah. Go check the freezer. So things like that were always just so, sort of funny. But the most eerie experience I ever had mm -hmm. was in the Powell House in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. And this was like a mega get your, like in the middle of the night, you stood up and got up and just sat there and tried to figure out what was going on. Um, years right, ago, yeah. I was a volunteer and a, um, like a docent for them, along with some other um, friends. And yeah. our friend's mother was, in a, she was in the National Park Service. So we were always volunteering and worked at the Liberty Bell for a while, different things like that. Yeah. So there was a period where we were uh, working an event at the Powell House and the Powell's were a real famous family involved in the revolution and the beginnings of Philadelphia. So they were a really yeah. wealthy family. We were staying overnight in the modern wing, sorry, actually the, the period wing of the house because there was yeah. like a huge special event and um, three or four of us gals had bunked out up in the ballroom with permission from the caretaker at the time who we knew really well. And yeah. basically we were sleeping. It was the middle of the night and we had like a radio in the room with us and we were like in sleeping bag stuff because basically the event was so late. We had to, we just stayed over rather than drive out of the city. Right. So to make a long story short, we had this, there was this hilarious thing that the caretaker had on the hallway. It was like a motion sensor, little frog thing. So like he could tell when someone was coming up to the third floor, the little, yeah. it was like one of those early sensors that would go ribbit, ribbit when someone would walk by it. Right. Oh, Wow. So in the middle, and it's one of those old fashioned staircases with like the platform and then another set of stairs and then a platform and then they're set up to the third floor. So we, here we are in the ballroom, right? And it's like yeah. two or three, it's like witching hour. It's three in the morning. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah. <laughs> ribbit, <laughs> totally. ribbit, yeah, ribbit. We're just like three in the morning, ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. We're like, oh goodness. And you're like, what, what's going on? Like, what is that? And we ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. And we're like, oh, is yeah. that that, is that that thing? And so, so one of us got up and walked on the stairs. And like turned him around, and if you turned him towards the wall, he would alarm for a second because the wall was there, but then would stop, right? Yeah. So he was the little thing was turned around, aimed at the wall, and then literally went back up, and we're all sort of laying back down, you know. And at the time, I'm like 16, 17 years old. Yeah. Ribbit, 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 <laughs> and we're just like, oh my god! So basically, something something was on the stairs. It was either moving the stairs and activating the little alarm, or it was you know, something was in front of it, but it, it happened for several minutes. So there's like three or four like oh, teenage docents who just helped at this major event. And we've been like serving canapes to like next door. Right. Our neighbor was, was like the, like the ambassador to like Greece. And this one over here was the ambassador or whatever. And we're like exhausted and we're like waking up in the middle of the night going, Oh my God, yeah. the house is haunted. This is haunted. It was really truly yeah. haunted. Yeah. It was creepy. It was really creepy. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That would definitely creep me, especially at three in the morning. Yeah, because it's always some time like that. Like, whenever you hear these stories, it's always, that's what makes it so, I think at the time it's happening, you're thinking, no, this can't be happening. But it's, there's something about that hour. There's something very, yeah, I don't know. Something, but definitely something, something about three in the morning that makes, yeah. you know, makes things makes happen. Things, like, just all of that come out, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was kind of like the weirdest, craziest thing that ever happened. And mm -hmm. I had some other experiences in that same house. But um, they were all, they were little things. It was just sort of like doors slamming or um, yeah. things. You've probably experienced it too, where things in historic sites move all the time. Like stuff oh, just gets yeah. moved. Yeah, Absolutely. they don't, they want you to know yeah, they're there. So. so, yeah. Hey, a couple people just joined us again. So, yeah. Hey, Chris and 
Dr. Chopa. Uh, sorry if I totally butchered that, but that's it. That's my friend Sarah. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> hey guys. So, um, yes. So, and Anthony just joined us too. Awesome. Yay. Um, so at the John Neville house, and this was actually just this past Christmas. Okay. Ooh, okay. Now, uh, yeah. So <laughs> now I am, you know, I'm, getting everything ready for the Christmas presentation. Now, just due to everything going on, we did not do like an in-person Christmas tour like there normally would have been. Um, instead, what we did was um, we did um, a virtual, kind of, you know, like a virtual mm -hmm. video uh, tour. Mm -hmm. And so I'm getting everything uh, set up for that. And um, uh, I was there with uh, one of the other board members, but then uh, she left, and so I'm just there by uh, by myself, you know, which you know I'm okay with. That that's fine, you know. It was still early enough in in the like afternoon, like or in the like closer to, closer to evening, but it was getting pretty close. Um, but it was still early enough to where it's like okay, I'm not here in the dark all by myself. Right. Um, so. <laughs> Which happens so, a lot in those places, um, and you're like, oh, I'm by myself in the dark in a, a spooky house. Okay. Freak oh, out. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what I, so I'm just kind of like just getting everything ready and all of that fun stuff. And I hear uh, this woman's voice talking, like just like clear as day, talking. Like there was no question. Like it was definitely a woman's voice. And I thought because it had been a female uh, board member that I had, you know, that, that I was with there, uh, just kind of getting preparations, and she, like I said, she left, I was kind of just there putting on some finishing touches, and, um, you know, and I, like, I heard, like, a woman's voice, I thought maybe she had come back, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like, wait, what, you know, and I go to the entrance, because I wasn't far from the entrance, I go to the entrance, and there was nobody there, I checked outside, around the grounds, like, there was Nobody no. there. Like I, I was the only one there, <laughs> you know. And I was just like, all right. And then there were other times when I was there uh, working on a few things, and I, you know, and, and other people have heard this too. Like you'll you'll hear somebody like sneeze. Yeah. Yeah. Or cough. Hear somebody... Coughing a lot. You often or hear cough. like a. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I've heard mm -hmm. somebody cough before. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, one of the other board members said that, like, he felt, like, a hand on his shoulder, and there was nobody else there, um, and there was one of the other board members, he was actually there at night, and just, just for fun, he, uh, snapped some photos, and he saw, of course, like, orbs in the photos, oh, and, wow. yeah, and he was, yeah, he was there, like, he had, cause he had to stop for something there late at night, so he snapped some photos, and then there's a couple people that said that they thought they actually saw John Neville walking across, you know, walking across the grounds. And there were a couple of times when I was there, I thought I could see there was somebody walking across the grounds. And I would turn and there would be nobody there, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, really, it's really interesting how many uh, stories and tales you hear of people at a site that, like, you know, even places like, I, you know, Disney World, people people catch Walt, like, what looks like Walt oh, Disney yeah. walking all the time. And I think about it, like, well, if someone left such a legacy or their home is still here, it just, it does really, you know, blow your mind to think they, they could still be walking around. They could yeah. be happily haunting it. It's very, it's very interesting to think about. But there's so many times people see something that just, like, so unmistakable. It, it does make you really wonder, like, what's going on yeah but like if someone loves something oh, yeah. so much or spent so much time there their energy mm -hmm. just maybe never never leaves i mean i have like a hundred theories on it but i definitely and i mean i'm a firm believer in yeah in the in in our heavenly father but like i still know there's a lot of things that i do not understand and that i will right. i i I'm open to the idea that I don't understand but people have experiences and some things are completely unmistakable that happen to people so the, oh, yeah. the super the supernatural is in my opinion completely undeniable so yeah. Oh, yeah. I just try not to let it scare me and recognize that right. there's things you know but when you work in historic sites early on you recognize it's like you know what 
there's something to this. I mean, there's um, there's energy. We know that people, when they die, they have energy, and that energy goes somewhere. Yeah. So maybe part of it's here, and maybe part of it goes up to heaven. Maybe part of it goes. I mean, who knows? It's just really, yeah. it's really interesting. But you know, people that I really believe people when they say that they see recurring things, because yeah. if someone really loves where they were, why wouldn't they come back? I mean, if I was Walt Disney, I'd hang out in Disney World all the time. I mean, I'm oh, disrespectful, but I totally it's the happiest place in the world. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't want to. Of course, it doesn't want to leave, but. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting to see how many historic sites have um, oh, yeah. recurring experiences from people who've oh, come. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, well, at the at the site that I'm going to uh, be at tomorrow for the um, Hydra Fall Festival, uh, Depreciation Lands Museum, they actually have a resident ghost there called the Deacon. Ooh. And yeah, and he's actually he's a benevolent ghost. He's he's not somebody. He, he's actually like I said, he's 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 a deacon, you know. So he was a set. I I believe he was said to be the deacon of um. There's a church that's like actually an old uh, Baptist church that's like actually right down the road from uh, the Depreciation Lands Museum, mm -hmm. and uh, there's like there there's stories about him. Um, you know, basically like helping somebody when they were about to fall off a ladder as they were um, fixing something um, in the church. And, yeah. um, yes, and, and every year on the Lantern Tours, um, they they have, like, this thing where, you know, can you spot the deacon? And, like, one of the, uh, you know, uh, one of the board members' husband, he usually dresses up as the deacon and, you know, keeps himself in shadow and you know, stands like the, yeah, like, you know, That's dressed cute. up as, like, people have described the deacon to be and everything, so, yeah, so there's a ghost there, and there was also, at that particular site, um, on one of the lantern tours one year, um, now, I didn't experience this, somebody else did, um, they, uh, they said that, uh, you know, some of the people, like, the groups that, that went through, um, like, the lantern tours, uh, they, you know, they went into the tavern because after the tour, um, you, you, you know, you can go in the, into the tavern for like hot chocolate, cookies, hot cider, things like that. So there's, there was a group of people that went through for the, uh, the, you know, went through the tavern, went through the, uh, the tours and everything, and they came into the tavern and they saw a, a man, you know, dressed in, cult, you know, in 18th century attire and, you know, said hello to them. And, um, you know, and of course the people said hello back. And when they went outside, um, they, they told uh, one of the other, uh, one of the other uh, people working that were, you know, giving the tours and working the event, uh, saying, oh yeah, we just saw uh, one of your, uh, one of your tour guides or something in there, one of your actors or, you know, in there. And right. they were like, and the person was like, oh, who? You know, the no, person in there. The event, they were like, oh, who? And, um, and they were like, and they described him and the person work, you know, that one of the people work in the event, they were like, there is nobody that looks like that. And they were like, oh yeah, well we took a, cause, cause they asked the, the person that they mm -hmm. encountered if they could take a photo and, right. you know, the person was like, oh, you know, yes, <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, and, and they were like, oh no, we took a photo of him. And when they showed the, um, when they showed like the, the the person working the event, uh, the you know their their phone, uh, it there was just an orb where the that's the man crazy. Was oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. Isn't that crazy? That's <laughs> That's so cool. I know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't the deacon. It was like it was. It was, it was somebody, somebody else? else. You know. Yeah, uh, I've I've heard many a story like that at historic places, especially. I mean, um, and and you you hear those types of stories a lot. It's like, yeah, we had this uh, the Powell House I was telling you about. The the one, the very first like story I ever heard after volunteering there for a long time was that one of my my closest friends' younger brothers was there. Like when they were preparing for an event, they always had garden parties and fundraisers, right? The kid, her her youngest brother was running in and out of the back portion of the house where there's like modern additions and there's a bathroom back there and you know how yeah. they add modern additions to an old house to, to, to service the public bathrooms and so the kid was just running in and out all day at one point he says to his sister and, and everybody else he's like who's that lady in black running around inside the house and we're like and everyone was just I wasn't there but it was like you know the sort of situation where 
Yeah. Like, who? What are you talking about? And he sort of describes this person. And he was like five years old at the time, right? So he describes this right. person. And it was very clearly, most likely, um, one of the Powell women from the 1790s or early 1800s, because he oh, described her in yeah. this. He described uh -huh. it like she's wearing this black veil. It was not over her face. It was back over her head. And the Powell's lost it. Apparently, like, one of the children died very early on in that era. And so all these people piece this together. But it was like, it was, I believe it because it was literally a child that I knew who I knew wouldn't have made up a story. He just kept, because it, right. it was like that situation where he goes, well, I'm just having this conversation with this lady. And they were like trying to figure out who it was because he said, oh, she's talking about the fact that she just lost her, you know, that she was looking for her child and she lost her child. But he was describing it as lost her child that she was looking for her child. But then they all put it together wow. that she was looking for her lost child dead child i mean eerie right and by the time yeah. everyone realized what was going on they were kind of like oh no but she was seen a lot in that period right so yeah yeah, yeah. wow yeah, crazy that, just crazy. crazy yeah, yeah but it's like out of that they always say out of the mouths of children like some i mean yeah. kids can tell tales but kids often just see things and then they'll walk in and just kind of feel like they go baby some from what's that lady in there? What's oh, yeah. she doing? Like, they're so innocent. They're just like, what's that person? Is that a, and then you realize later, it's like, maybe they, they did see something or, you know, right. Oh, it's, it's just mind blowing. It is pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Those yeah, sorts that's... of stories abound. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have you ever experienced anything at Fort Frederick when you were there? You know, I haven't. The only things I've experienced at Fort Fred are crazy weather. Um, but yeah. other than that, like I don't spend a lot of time, Sadly, I'd, I'd love to spend more time in the barracks and in the actual fort, but I'm always, you know, sort of parked and camped right outside the entrance. Um, right, yeah. I, I will say that there's like a sense of like being so close to the fort. I do feel um, I don't want to say it's energy, but I, I do feel like it, there's yeah. different areas of that fort and that that ground oh, yeah. where. You can just, you just feel sort of like, you know, when you go to, you can't describe it, but like you go to certain places, like my first sure, time yeah. ever in Devil's Den in Gettysburg, I was young Ooh, and I was yeah. like depressed. And my parents kept saying, what is wrong with you? Like, why are you okay? Right. And I, the whole day I was walking around, like I understood as a child what had happened there, but I could sense yeah. the energy and the death. And, you know, it was really awful. I just remember being kind of sick to my stomach all day. And later I looked yeah. back and thought, well, no wonder. But Fort Fred, I always get a pretty good vibe from. But I feel like the energy. I, I feel like there's energy there. I feel like there's yeah, energy there. Especially if you go into the fort and the barracks at night. Uh, same mm -hmm. thing with Fort Niagara. There's definitely like a you know energies there. There's and, an imprint um, there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and I know that Fort Niagara definitely has its stories. Um, I haven't personally mm. experienced anything there. Um, but I have like I've, I've felt stuff, but I've not actually you know. I haven't had anything that you could say is an experience there. Um, I know that um, this other um, this other woman in the costuming world, um, her name is uh, Time Traveling Native. Oh yeah, and I hung out with her for a bit at, uh, at Penn's Colony uh, just recently, and um, and she and she li actually lives near Fort Niagara, and like she said, like you know she's she's seen stuff there and, you know, people she knows have, you know, have seen stuff there too. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, and of course there's also, um, this story about that, the, the headless ghost that, you know, I have heard that. I have heard that. Yeah. That's the only thing I know about Niagara. I've been up a couple of times, but I have heard that there are a lot of people that have had some just kind of eerie, nothing like earth yeah. shattering, but just like when they've slept in the, the sort of catacombs, Right. And they've had, I've heard about the headless ghost. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, of course. Yeah. They're all brave. You're all brave to sleep up there. Cause last time I went to Niagara was in 2003 and I did sleep there, but in an, in a small tent on the, uh -huh. the sort of green out front. But a lot of other people were sleeping in all those and all the barracks and all the different, I just remember them being like the, like the stone rooms. Like they were just like really yeah. beautiful, but eerie and everybody that had slept in there. So the one night was sort of like, yeah, didn't, didn't sleep very well. It was kind of cold and spooky. On so. my bucket list to sleep in, because especially since I'm starting to do the soldier thing now too. It's yeah, on my bucket list to sleep in like the barracks, at, whether it's Fort Frederick, Fort Niagara. Yeah, that's like on like the bucket that's fun. list. That's fun. Things I want to do. Yeah, sleep yeah. In the barracks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> like years ago the guy it's kind of like no it's almost like guys are like why would you want to sleep in the barracks we're all like we want to sleep in the barracks because it's a fun exactly. experience yeah it's like a, it's a neat experience i think it's um the only place uh historic that i ever slept 
that was that was kind of like that was um, uh, Fort Mifflin years ago, and it, it had that kind of feel of very eerie and right. um, that kind of just being in another world. Um, but it also, the effect of that was kind of ruined by the fact that Fort Mifflin, beautiful as it is, is kind of like here, and the Philadelphia airport is like here, and the planes yeah. don't like fly basically like, boom, every five minutes, and you're just like, oh, the, you know, the ambiance is right. kind of not yeah. so much, but it's still a beautiful fort. I mean, and so the joke was everyone, you know, when you're at Fort Mifflin, everyone goes, why did they build the fort so close to the airport? And we're like, yeah. oh, well, because, you know, the airport wasn't here. And right. The Rev War period. We try not to look like, you know, mean when we say it. We're like, remember, air airports didn't airport. exist. Mm-hmm. So they, they so blame the, yeah. yeah, blame the airport for putting them so close to the. <laughs> but it's just cute. People would just sort of say, I wonder why they put the. Air- I wonder. It's like instead of saying, I wonder why they put the airport so close to the fort. They're like, why did they build the fort so close to the airport? It's just really. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because the airport was around, you know, <laughs> you know, two hundred years ago or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, I, of course, there's always, like, the questions that you get from people, you know, why did they put the fort so close to the airport? Right, like we, <laughs> like we talked about before, it's definitely part of that, because, like, you realize people are genuinely, um, it's just that, like, they don't think before they speak, because a lot of us are guilty right. about it, just every day, we kind of go, oh, I wonder why, blah, 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 but it's, like, it's really funny, the things that people ask you or say when you're at a site, they'll be like, so... Yeah, why why did they do this or that? But inst- until they've thought about it, they usually just sort of spit it out, and then they realize later, oh gosh, that must have sounded stupid. Oh, but it is yeah. it is really funny. We are all guilty of that, but it is funny sometimes the things you hear, right? It's just like, yeah, no, well, the airport oh, wasn't yeah. here. Yeah, so Especially it's just like if you participate in a battle, are you guys really going to shoot each other? Right. Like, are, yeah. Isn't this really you know? dangerous? Like, do you, are those real bullets? And we're just like, well. Well, no, they're charges, but they're not real bullets, and right. you know, it's it's just cute, yeah. But I mean, yeah. it is it is it is adorable. I know. <laughs> same thing with like if you're do, working on doing a you know working the cannons and everything, firing the cannons yeah. or artillery. Are you but guys how are you not killing all those people? And you're like, well, there's not a real tra- it's a charge, but there's no like ammo in there. There's no exactly. cannonball, and they go, yeah. they're like, yeah, it's hard to yeah. understand. Do you know what? I wonder why. Why don't we get asked more? Is uh, like pertinent to this conversation, for example, and all of right. you can chime in too that are watching. So, for yeah. example, when you're working at a historic site and you're giving a tour and all the things we normally do, cooking, whatever. Yeah. Why don't we do? I mean, people do ask, "Is it haunted?" But I don't get that as much as the "Are you hot?" Well, yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm hot. We all know that. That sort of hilarious. Like, are you hot? Are you uncomfortable? You know, it's yeah. a really basic question. People genuinely want to know what it's like because they're not brave enough maybe to put on the clothing and experience it. But it's cute. I don't get asked as much as I would think, is this haunted? You know, I think yeah, some people are scared. I, they're scared to ask, right? They're scared to, like, right. and also they're, I mean, they're afraid of offending ask, you. Yeah, I mean, I've asked a couple. I've been asked a couple times, um, especially at the John Neville house, um, if it's mm-hmm. haunted. Um, but, yeah, but you, it, it's really interesting now that you mention it, how you don't really get asked that much and you would think no. that you would think that would be on a lot of people's minds mm-hmm. yeah i know right i mean you know well you go to a place like you know i think like yeah you mentioned gettysburg before it was like you know of course gettysburg is haunted <laughs> you know yeah um, it's like answer yes yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> is this haunted yeah. yes yeah. uh-huh <laughs> and i don't know this is a, a book on uh the spirits of the farnsworth house in have you ever been to the Farnsworth house? Mm-hmm. I would like to get my husband to sleep there at least once before we kick off this mortal coil, as they say, because yeah. we live so close to Gettysburg and like you, we go a lot. We love Gettysburg. And I would really, I mean, we've had breakfast, dinner, lunch there at the, the various restaurants and yeah. we always love it. And it's beautiful. A friend of mine stayed many years ago, had some very interesting experiences yeah. And um, I really, really do want to stay. And he's kind of worried that we'll bring something home with us. <laughs> so he doesn't really want to go. You know, that just happens sometimes. People, they get a familiar spirit. Somebody, something clings on someone. And next yeah. thing you know, they go home. And it's kind of interesting. I'd still like to do it. I would, I've, yeah. I've read a lot on Farnsworth. It is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have stayed overnight in Gettysburg. I've not stayed at the Farnsworth house, though. Where'd you I stay? I'm curious. Yeah. Maybe Farnsworth we should just do it together because my husband's like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. You're crazy. Go there. 
I get a, we should get, get a bunch of girls. Get a bunch of girls. Together. <laughs> there you go. All right. Haunted yeah. night. Who wants to who wants to hang out with us at the Farnsworth? <laughs> yeah, I know. We'll we'll do it. So message us. Yeah, yeah so we're crazy. I've, I've of course I've stayed at the the uh, Brechtel Victorian Mansion. It's just outside yeah. of the town. Yes. And I've also stayed at a Sentimental Journey uh, bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. So that's where I've stayed. Um, I've, I've had dinner at the Farnsworth house. I've been on a few ghost tours at the Farnsworth house. And one of the things I want to do when I go back, cause they actually do like paranormal, like ghost hunts and everything. I'd like to mm -hmm. do that. Um, it's on my bucket list to stay in the Farnsworth house, but I would not want to do it by myself. That's what I mean. We got to get a group That's of really like-minded. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't either. Because some of the maybe if like the spirits were all like friendly, I wouldn't mind. But there's like, a few that are nasty. I'm told that at oh, Farnsworth, yeah. there's a couple that are there's a couple that are like Harvey Sweeney. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Harvey Sweeney. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. If, I, I've I've heard stuff like just from people that have stayed in the Har Harvey Sweeney room, like waking up to him, like because apparently he was a very 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 evil vile man. Yeah, violent. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they, they've w woken up to him, like, screaming in their ear and just, you know, yeah. Not grabbing good. their ankles on the bed. And, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. And, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> I want to stay in the room with the child, the one with the child in, and I'll be like, I'll stay with the child ghost. Y'all go over there with Mr. Sweeney because he's not. Yeah. Um, and there's, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's also the Sarah Black room that has the wedding dress in it, and supposedly... Oh. At night, the wedding dress actually comes to life and starts moving around. Oh. There's a picture of the wedding dress in here. That's scary. I'll find it. Oh, I have oh. I have the mother of all ghost stories that I'll save for the end if y'all are listening and you really want. I mean, like, actual real experience to do with Key West ghosts. I'll tell you that. Yeah. But it's okay, almost yeah. as scary this as this is, one. This is the wedding dress the Sarah, in the Sarah Black room. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I would stay in the Sarah Black room, perhaps, because I would just be very, I don't know, that, that dress sparks a curiosity within me. So, what, what, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I wouldn't want to stay there by myself, though, you know? It's like, yeah. yeah. Well, the dress almost feels like more innocuous compared to Mr. Sweeney. So, oh, you yeah. know, but yeah, yeah, if I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a wedding gown kind of moving around or something, I mean, I would probably literally like run out the door actually i don't think i'd run i get like when i get scared i don't know about you tiffany when i get scared i just free so yeah. if like a bear if a bear was coming at me i'd just be like i'm dinner <laughs> i'm dinner it's i can't move it's not gonna end well uh -huh. um because i tend to do that thing where i just get so like i'm trying to we're, we're all trying to analyze like this isn't really happening right. i'm not really yeah. i'm not really seeing that gown move um yeah that's yeah. not really happening yeah uh-huh <sighs> yeah i don't know but yeah. um the friend of mine that stayed in, I don't know which room she stayed in, but she stayed yeah. there in sometime in the mid nineties and Hey guys. And, um, long story short, she left a bunch of, as they say, trigger objects, right? So she stayed in the Farnsworth in one of the rooms and she set out, she did her research too. She knew about all the ghosts that were supposedly there. Yeah. And like she the set child out, is leaving toys for him. You know, that's what yeah. she did. She left it like child for the a child's thing for the, for the children. She left something for, I remember cause she was the first one who really told me about Sweeney. And oh. then all the years of going there and realizing the Sweeney's Tavern, I was like, ooh, I, and I, I read a couple books on it. And um, so I knew about him specifically, but she left things for each sort of, of the ghost. And in the middle of the night, she did, like, and yeah. she did that thing where she, like, dusted, she dusted the area with, like, I don't know, talcum powder or something, so you could tell us yeah. it moved. And according to her, and she took all kind of pictures, and again, who, who really knows? She might have just been, oh yeah, you know, she could have been doing it for her own whatever fun. But I mean, she she claimed that some of the things moved, and I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised by that when you consider how many people have been through there. But oh yeah, um, yeah, it's pretty wild. She she didn't sleep though. She pretty much sat up all night, and sort of, I think she must have slept and she must have drifted in and out of sleep. But she claimed yeah. that several things happened, and it just sort of the room just wasn't quiet, and yeah. she could hear just strange things going on more than like, and, and always like between two and four in the morning. It's always interesting that way. So after she yeah. told me that I wasn't too keen to go back and like stay there. I was like, yeah, that's uh -huh. a, I'm good. <laughs> I don't really think I want to stay yeah. there. But, a lot of the tours um, end in the cellar. 
And mm-hmm. the cellar is pretty creepy down there. And they say um, the further back you sit in the cellar, uh, you're more likely to experience something. So I always, for sure, always sit in the back. And I have, I mean, like I said, it's one of those things where it's like you feel an energy, but yeah. I've not experienced, experienced anything. Um, but I did um, experience uh, one thing. It's, uh, there was something on um, a ghost tour that um, we ended up at one of the battlefields. And, you know, and, and this was at night, obviously. So there's no reenactments or anything going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm there with a friend of mine. And um, we're just like, you know, and everybody's, you know, just on the tour. The tour guide's, you know, talking, doing her thing. And we all start hearing what sounds like cannons being fired across the battlefield. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And there was like, there, that's the thing. Like, there were no reenactments. Um no fireworks, you know, nothing that could really explain, you know, there were no speakers or anything around to add some effect, you know, like there was nothing to really explain what that was. And at first I don't, I think nobody wanted to say anything, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like, what is that? What is that? Are you hearing that? Like, yeah. yeah. And then suddenly, yeah, somebody did speak up and, um, you know, and we're like, they're like, did you hear that? That sounds like cannons. And then, then finally everybody else was like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, and ev- we're just all like, oh my gosh, like, we're, yeah. are we hearing, like, actual cannons from, like, the Battle of Gettysburg and everything, so. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what they call, like, an, it's like an energy memory where basically, like, all of a sudden you get sound phenomenon from something yeah. that's been, yeah, long gone, and it is, it is crazy, just sort of like, yeah. you know, the voices when people have those recorders and they leave them and you just hear, like, a, hello, I'm here, and you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, it's really that simple. It's, like, something that happens, and someone's uh-huh. trying, you know, someone's just trying to get your attention, but I have, right. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I've never heard, I've never heard sound phenomenon quite like that. The only thing I've ever yeah. heard has just been, like, little audible things that, that are kind of strange, but you're not quite sure what they are. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, oh, my goodness, Gettysburg, I wouldn't put anything past what the energy that's there. I mean, you hear people yeah. talk about all sorts of things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um so what are your favorite um ghost stories that like maybe like you haven't necessarily experienced but you've heard about like that come from like history sites and all that stuff. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, I have like the my favorite actually I do have like a personal story attached to it. So I could tell you about okay. that one. My All favorite, right. my favorite ghost story was I got really fascinated with Key West because um, years ago. Now I don't know if you've been to Key West, Tiffany, but there it's a really haunted area too. Oh, so okay. yeah, it's up there with sort of like the top haunted places in the world. And um, yeah. so we went. Uh, I took my honeymoon there in 2003, and then some really good friends of ours, Sarah, who was who had hopped on earlier. I'm not sure if Sarah's still here, but um, she and her husband got married in Key West the following summer. So we were there like two summers in a row. The first summer I was there, okay, there was this, um, and I should have looked it up right before I got on with you, but a lot of people will probably know about the story because um, yeah. Zach, Zach Bagans on Ghost Adventures actually bought this haunted doll for his museum recently, right? Okay. And this doll is like the creepiest doll in the world, and it was known as like this creepy, creepy, and I don't even remember the name of the doll, but if you heard it, you would know it. So... Yeah. First time we first time we went to Key West, we heard and uh, about the ghost stories and went on a ghost tour or two. And I was fascinated because the story was of a woman who was working in a household, and it was probably turn of the 20th century. She bought okay. this doll for this child that she took care of um, yeah. in a family, and this doll was um, reported. As, like, I don't even say it because I'm not even gonna like. I don't even want the energy drawn. It's, that, it was, right. it's yeah. something. Just you could like Google it. Yeah, it's like. His name was begins with an R, and I'm not even going to say it. He's like, like, you can talk about this thing, and it gets creepy. So yeah. he, she, she gave him this doll, and no one really knows if she gave it to him to jinx him or to bless him, but this doll would be, like, seen at the window, in the house, when people weren't yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Right? Crazy. And yeah. I don't remember what happened to the child. I mean, I think he grew up okay, but the point was it was just a really weird thing where people would see this doll, and people would see things happen, right? So years later, the doll survives and gets put in this certain museum in Key West. I didn't know that. 
I know what you're talking about. Right? And so there's all this phenomenon to do with the something the doll where people would take pictures of him and then the, the yeah. camera would break or the film would oh, get I know exposed. What you're talking about. Okay, yeah. right? So here's here's where it gets really creepy. So I was just like really interested. I've always been interested in ghost stories like you, like a lot of people. So when oh, we yeah. left left for honeymoon that year, I bought this book. Did you know I bought this book and it had the story of him and there was some sort of like, you know, the, the touristy oh, yeah. books you buy. So we buy it and I'm on the way home and I get home that summer. I remember reading through the whole book because it was just like, oh, this is the new book. I'm going to read about this. Well, mm-hmm. here's what gets interesting. So yeah. he's known for creating strange phenomena with things going missing, things breaking. Right. My husband, <clears throat> we fly back on the plane and we had to have his ID to fly home. So I know he had it when he flew home. But when we got back to New Jersey, which was where we were living down the shore at the time, yeah. Tiffany, his 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 ID went missing, right? So it wasn't that unusual. Like we thought, well, maybe he left, you know, like when you're in the airport, you were yeah. constantly getting, you're still getting your ID out all the time, right? So you get your ID oh, out. Gosh. But I figured he, he was like, oh, darn it, I lost it. So we lost his ID somewhere, right? We know it was lost. Oh, it was geez. lost. Wow. We didn't think, we didn't think much of it. But yeah. a few days, a few days later, and I'm trying to remember exactly the series of events, but what I do remember with, with actually, I mean, it was vivid. Barry said, I need to go to the DMV and get a new ID because I'm going to have to go to this party down here. He was a lifeguard at the time. They would go to a lot oh, of like, yeah. you know, parties and a lot of bars and things. You know, he was, yeah. you know, not a partier, but anyway, he knew he had to get a, and he knew he had to have his ID to get in this bar. So he was going to go get his ID. He didn't have enough time. He showed up at this bar and for like an after party for somebody's birthday, he gets to the door and he knows he's going to get asked as he was in his early thirties then. So he was going to get carded. Yeah. Okay. He said to me, he said to me, I kid you not. He said, he came home that later that night and he was spooked because here's what happened. He got to the door and they said, you need to see your ID. So he's opening up his wallet and he's thinking, I'm going to have to tell them. It's going to sound like a sob story. Like, you know, I don't have my ID with me. Um, yeah. But, you know, all these people can vouch for me or whatever. My... He is like his social security card. I don't know. He just, he knew at that point he was probably going to have to turn around and come home. Guess what was in his wallet? His ID. Yeah. And here's what makes it creepy. So earlier that day. I threw uh-huh. out the book. I threw out the book about Mr. The Doll. Mm-hmm. Because we'd figured out earlier that there might have been a connection. I know it sounds that crazy, but yeah. I literally said to him, like, it had been about a week. And I said, on the front of the book was a picture of this doll. Yeah. And this doll was known to cause phenomena. And I was just like, you know what? I think we should throw out the book. So on the way to somewhere that earlier that day, we had thrown the book out, but we, I kid you not, I swear, this God's honest truth, we didn't throw it out at home. We didn't even want it near the house. We threw out the right. book in a dumpster behind some, like, you know, it was like a Wawa or something. Okay. Because we didn't want it anywhere near us. And it was later right. that evening that his ID showed up. So after that all happened, we were a little creeped out. And then I started yeah. doing some more research. I hopped online, and I was just sort of, it was early days of the Internet, too. This was, like, 20 years ago. So oh, I'm, like, looking. Really and apparently, uh-huh. when people would take pictures of this doll and do different, like, if they get rid of the pictures, or things, it was very common for this to happen. So after that experience, I'm not, su- I'm not, surpri- I'm not surprised by anything. I'm not. Right. It was the creepiest thing. So that is the, fa- the story that fascinates me the most is like, I wonder what that doll really is, but he continues to cause problems and Zach Bagans yeah. owns him. And I'm like, you're brave dude. Cause I wouldn't want that thing anywhere near me. We didn't even yeah. go to the museum to look at him, but that's probably my sort of favorite creepy story because it, it's it to me, it, right. it, it came true. So yeah, mm-hmm. totally weird. Um, yeah. Well, even mm-hmm. the story behind that particular doll, it's just, it's really, really strange. Very yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. People think she gave the doll to him to protect him because yeah. the doll did seem to be almost like an over. Oh, it's just creepy. It even makes me creepy. I guess I talk about it, but it's, <laughs> it's like, it is totally. So if you're all interested, just like Google it. It's just like, it's like the most haunted doll in the most world. Most haunted doll and... in West Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, nuts. Yeah. And, and apparently the, the, um, the, the guy, well, the, the kid who owned that doll, he grew up and he got, got he, I think he married a couple times because his wives were all, like, freaked out by the attachment that he had to the doll. Yeah, there was something and, about that, wasn't there? I remember the same, yeah, I don't, I just remember enough to know that there was something weird about it. he was always connected with it, and it was like, it yeah. was like, char- it was charm. It was charm. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess yeah, his um, yeah, his marriages never lasted because his wives were like, "The doll, get rid of this doll." Like, no, <laughs> you yeah, know? it's crazy. And his wives were like, "You're you're a freak 
get me out. So they left. <laughs> you know? I don't blame them. I mean, like five minutes with that book in my house. And I was a bit like, I don't like this book. I went, yeah. He's like, did yeah. you finish reading yeah. it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, let's throw it out. Okay, good. We'll throw it out. Well, that's the museum that the doll is at. They actually sell replicas of the doll. And I was very tempted to buy one, but I'm like, I don't know. Because even yeah. though it's just a replica, it's not like the mm -hmm. actual doll. But it's still, still it still carries a bit of like, it's kind of like, I don't know, something really violent. Would you want something? I mean, we're, yeah. we all have our own tastes and sometimes things don't have to, you don't have to assign something just because something is, you know, like, again, like, if something's beautiful, but something tragic happened, it doesn't necessarily follow that thing shouldn't oh, be yeah. loved. Yeah, loved or adored. But I kind of I, I'm, I'm a bit like, mm, yeah, I think I'm yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll just wave at you while I walk away. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I wouldn't yeah. want to buy it. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. yeah, and you need to, like, ask him permission to take his photo. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff associated with that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've done a little reading on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but that's definitely anything to do with dolls is just like Oh, creepy. Yes. So creepy. Yeah. Because they're like an innocuous object, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, for yeah. children to, you know, love, have a little bit of like a playmate before they actually go out into the world, go to school and start like making human friends. Yeah. You know, but there's just something about dolls and even like children, like having imaginary friends. That's another one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've mm -hmm. seen um, a few stories where, um, you know, like the, ch you know, children, you know, and of course the parents are first like, Oh, you know, every child has an imaginary friend, you know, it's, that's nothing like nothing unusual, which for the most part it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, but then there were times when like, you know, I mean, I've heard you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard stories about how the child would like draw pictures of the family and there would be like this kind of weird little dark object off somewhere and, or some like menacing looking creature like off in the corner and the parents would be like, you know, who's that or what's mm -hmm. that? You go, and they're like, Oh, that's, Rachel or whatever. That's my imaginary. That, that that's my friend that I'm always talking to. And it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. Anything yeah, but like, but dolls are just like, yeah. I don't know. There's just something about stories surrounding dolls that just like really. Especially a lot like of people. Old, yeah. Dolls. Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of people say the dolls are like the creepiest thing. Like there's that, have you heard about that Island of the dolls? A lot of people have seen that. There's like this. Okay. Yeah. That, that freaked yeah. me out. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yes. That's kind of how I feel about dolls myself. It was cute. Um, you know, when I was, we all like dolls when we we're young, most girls like dolls, but I, yeah. I, I got over that doll phase really quickly because as soon as I was like a teenager or, you know, I don't know, tweeny, I was like, I don't know. I just find things with a human image to be sometimes a little creepy. So yeah. I think that maybe part of it is that like, maybe that's just it. Like spirits maybe assign themselves to dolls because they're right. familiar or something, but there does seem to be some sort of really creepy thing about dolls sometimes. And yeah. I've never, I've never been like oddly put off, but it, I can't say I like them. And I saw that story about yeah. the island of the dolls and I was like, Oh yeah, I'm done. I'm good. I don't need, I don't need any dolls around me. I don't want any dolls. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do have um, a couple of, like, older, like, dolls that, like, belong to my grandmother and my mom and everything. Um, but, yeah, but it's just, like, I don't know, the idea of getting, like, another, like, kind of antique doll. It's, just, you know, older doll, vintage doll, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just kind of like... I don't know. I mean, I kept yeah. the ones that belonged to my mom and grandma when they were little, because it was, it was my mom and grandma, you know, it's like, yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, we all keep some stuff like that. I mean, sometimes you just yeah. inherit things, and you're like, oh, this is beautiful. I'll put this away and get it out of yeah. so off and look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and my mom's not using that doll, so I was just like, okay, yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, I can have it for, you know, my, I guess, it's at, well, it's in storage right now but whenever I, I made you know I move into a larger place it'll be you know I don't know I'll have it somewhere um mm -hmm. but or I'll use it for I don't know one of my videos I don't know but um <laughs> but uh and then there's this um bride doll that I have it's kind of creepy 
Mm -hmm. It belonged to, uh, I think it was, I want to say it was either my grandma's or a friend of my great, because you know how like sometimes like they're like somebody's like a very close friend of the family, you call them aunt or yeah. you, you might still call them aunt or grandma, you know, even though they're not your aunt or grandma, oh, yeah. like by blood. Yeah, yeah I, it was either my grandma's doll or one of her friends doll that like we still like we called her grandma because she was so close to my grandma and close friends of the family and everything yeah um yeah but i do like but yeah it's um yeah it's like it's a bride doll and it's it's kind of creepy looking because it's like it has like that kind of old you know kind of you know very vintage look to it and everything and um mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't had any experiences with them, but, <laughs> you know, but it's still, like I said, like, if I ever, like, you know, I guess did something where I needed a creepy doll, I would use those. You've got <laughs> it. Yeah, you well, know, people yeah, say they, yeah. you can set up, you can set up dolls, and sometimes that's the thing people find that they move, even in, like, happy households, they might be, it's, like, the one thing that somehow. Yeah. Tends to shift a little bit, so I don't know, you could set it out and almost see, see if anything happens, but. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a time when I actually I wanted to own an antique ventriloquist dummy. Oh. <laughs> I I don't I don't really want I don't know if I want to now, but I did go through, you know, like that kind of you know, goth phase where I just wanted to be I want all, everything creepy and all yeah. that stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. I understand. You know, and so, yeah, and so I was just like, um, you know, so yeah, what I was like, I want to own an antique ventriloquist dummy and everything, and, um. Wow, and I, if something was going to be haunted, I'm telling you, it would probably be of that. Of course. That yeah. would be freaking creepy, yeah. Yeah, oh. I, yeah, like, I, I'd be kind of freaked out if, like, say, I sat it somewhere in the house, in the apartment, and I went to sleep, and then I woke up. And it would be sitting there like that. That would kind of creep me out. Yeah, I might be a little worried. <laughs> so. I would, at that point, I'd be like, OK, we're going to have to have a talk here, mister. Because, yeah. you know, you're you, freaking you, me you out. Stay. You stay over there. Yeah, go over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I find it my, in my house, I creep people out, like the builders that occasionally come work on my house every five years or so. I need yeah. a builder and I've got I've got one right now. And like he went up to the attic and I've got one of many mannequins because you know being a fashion designer down the years I've got like I've got like vintage mannequins and then I have like a modern mannequin and then I've got you know mm -hmm. dress forms that, yeah the attic's full of crazy things the basement's full of crazy things so it was just funny the other day because Rich went up there and he was just like ah! and I, I was like you okay he's like I got totally person, you know? he got totally spooked this thing it, she's like kind of draped oh, but she's man. half naked and like she's seven foot tall it's ridiculous so like you're just sort of like what you went yeah. up to the attic, went up the attic to check on, you know, to basically like to fish some stuff down into the room he's working on, and right. he's like, he's like freaking out. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that there's some creepy mannequins in the attic. Yeah, so like, he got the fright of his life, and he was laughing. He's like, leave it to you. I'm like, I know. So you're not just, <laughs> you don't just get spooked here. You get spooked with like creepy vintage yeah. mannequins. Yeah, but oh, that was yeah. pretty. They're almost as bad as dolls. Yeah, and yeah. they have such, they have such a look of the dead. Yeah, they have such a look of the decade that they're from, and so everything, you know, no matter every, you know how it is, like, every movie decade has a look, even though we try to make oh, it look yeah. period, it doesn't really work. Yeah. But it was kind of freaky how you look at these things after time, and you're like, oh, that thing really creeps me out. It, um, yeah. yeah, so it really yeah. freaked him Hi, out. Carla. He was <laughs> he was like, oh, my yeah. gosh, and I'm like, yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned all the mannequins in the attic. You know, like, dis disclaimer, <laughs> when you work at my house, you'll get spooked by the strangest things. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that was funny. Was quite creepy, too, I think. Um, I keep their heads I covered know, down here in the studio. I can't stand looking at them. They creep me out. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's always like those stories of, um, hey, Carla. <laughs> there's always uh, those stories about, you know, people. I mean, shopping malls aren't necessarily as prevalent you know as they were like 10 20 years ago and everything but um love the creepy she's oh yeah so do we that's what we're talking about so but there's always that story about you know like there's like kind of older stories especially about like you know getting locked in the, the mall or something like yeah. that and you know and then just like you know having the mannequins come to life and you know yeah. that, that's the 
subject of so many like oh my gosh movies and books and yeah yeah no I, my mother worked in a department store like a lot of women in the 20th century she spent a lot of time in a couple stores in a big mall in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s and like oh my goodness the story she she used to tell about Sometimes the guys that were like the security guards would freak out and think that the mannequins were moving. And sometimes they were. They were like, you know, arm would fall off right. in the middle of the night and they'd, they'd be like spooked and they'd run halfway across the, you know, they'd be like out of there. Like, like, you know, grown uh -huh. men with guns were like freaking out yeah. because <laughs> like, <running> arm, out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the story's like, oh my God, yeah. the mannequin. So it's really yeah. true. It's, it's really funny. Um, but uh, she had just like some strange stories about um, just about things moving. She did find yeah. that she would go and she would be the, you know how like when you're, you have a job and you close, as they say, like you would close the location wherever you are. Maybe you're working at like a yeah. brother's, maybe it doesn't matter where you close, you're closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you were the last one in, but you're in the next morning. Like mom would have a lot of shifts where she was there at night. Then she'd come back okay. the next morning and stuff would yeah. be moved. She knew nobody could, else could be in there. Nobody else had the keys. So it's like, right. what happened? You know, who did the moving? What, you know, so Haunted, like, malls were, I mean, who knows what, I always think about if a mall was haunted, what land is it on? And that's the thing about yeah, what yeah, was disturbed, right. what was disturbed to, to build that mall. And uh, that that's where my brain always led, even as a child. But she used to say, oh, yeah, no, that, that big building, there's a lot of weird things that went on there. And right. she, didn't, she didn't like closing. Nobody likes closing because then you have to, like, well, at those days, you had to walk the money. Like, you had a big stack of money and like, those, this, those old bank um bags where you'd fill the bank bag with all the like the you know the old like with the credit cards oh, yeah. and uh -huh. you know all that cash and you have to walk all the way down there's always a bank or three in the mall and you go down to the safe deposit box it was on the outside because right. you know we're, we're older than dirt now kids now are like what paper money no i'm kidding i'm not teasing you guys like too badly but like you know we grew up in the age when there was like no cell phones no this no that and you literally had to like walk the money and the credit card slips and she would get really freaked out even having to do that because it was a huge responsibility but along the way she was just like oh that mall was creepy i did not want i hate doing yeah. this but she would she'd come back every morning and there would be things that would be like just moved and so she always yeah. sort of was like all right whatever i'm getting on with that but it was it was interesting there there used to be i think a few years ago there used to be a website i don't know if it's still around now Mm -hmm. It's called abandonedmalls.com. Oh, I have seen that. It's totally creepy. Yeah, yes, yeah. you have to you have to check out abandoned malls. Yes. I know. It's just kind of like like it's just it's so they they are creepy looking when there's like nothing. Same thing with old amusement parks. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Well, all the energy that's left behind like an amusement park or a mall, yeah. I think that's it's like I yeah. for me, I think that's the whole like place memory. It's like all the stuff that happened and not necessarily dead spirits, but just like energy but, that's left. Yeah. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, people talk about the old amusement parks that are shut and how the rides will still, like, there's no energy to a ride, and it's still going, and you read about those stories, and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, like, you know, just looking, yeah, because I've seen pictures of old abandoned amusement parks and everything, and it's, yeah, and then, like, yeah, you do hear those stories about, you know, how they're still moving or like, so, like yeah, it's just stuff will start up and everything. And mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's like how, because obviously it hasn't been running for quite some time. And mm -hmm. I would especially be intrigued by like, cause you know, every amusement park has like it's haunted house, haunted attraction. Right. And, and I would be definitely intrigued. It's like, I don't know. I, on the one hand I'd be, a little bit scared to go into one of those old abandoned haunted attraction houses, but at the same time, it would be kind of cool, <laughs> you know. I think so too. Especially um, like the older one, because I think you know, there's just something about, especially if you look at like Halloween costumes, like from the 1930s and 20s, and like they're so like simple but very very creepy. And Carla, I'll go check it out. So call me if you guys want to go. Sure, we'll make it a road trip. Why not? <laughs> you know? Absolutely. I'm game. Why not? It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but, like, you know, and, and so so especially if, um, you know, if you, like, go into, like, say, what, like, especially, like, an older amusement park that has been around, you know, especially since, you know, at least maybe the mid-20th century, yeah. you know, and you see some, like, it's like on the one hand, like it's like the stuff is so kind of simple and archaic looking, but then 
they're also so creepy looking at the same time and sometimes even more creepy than the more, you know, technologically advanced stuff that's like the holograms and all that stuff that, that's yeah. very prevalent today. Oh, so, I think that early stuff's much creepier and fun because yeah. I, there's something nice about the old school. Sometimes the, the new technology is almost like it's so good that it's bad. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's so, it's so like realistic that it's like it has no charm. I don't. But then my husband put it well the other day, and I think a lot of us can relate, when she said, I do not like anything modern. Yeah. I do not like any – well, but there, I'm sure there's some exceptions. We like Madison. <laughs> like, we, we, we like, like having our phones. Let's, right. Let's admit but, that. <laughs> but beyond modern that, like, it's, it's a, phone, yeah, you know? modern fashion, modern this, <laughs> no, oh, don't like it. I want vintage. Yeah. I want I want, I want, want old stuff. So, yeah, it looks – and you're right. It's like – there's, and Carla just said it. So there's something really authentic and genuine about things that were made in previous decades to whatever we're living through right now. Because everything right now yeah. is genuinely very disposable. It's meant it really to be. Is, yeah, Carla, it's a different it's, attitude. Yeah. Earlier yeah. stuff is so genuine and looks more real. I Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I think that's what, what draws so many of us, like, history nerds to yes, you know, absolutely. do what we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything, know? whether it's, like, Vintage clothing or vintage cars or vintage houses or, I mean, you name it. And it's just, it just feels more, it does, oh, it feels more real or permanent than, than yeah. honestly, the, it's a strange thing. But I think when I pass, I'll be much more comfortable than I am here because I'm not comfortable in my modern skin. I'm just not. I feel like I'm like an old soul stuck in a very yeah, modern body going, modern let me way. out, right? Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if you believe in, like, right? past lives or anything like that, but, like, um, you know, but sometimes it's, like, I do feel, like, you know, especially when I go to a history site, and I'm, I'm it's like, I feel like I've done it before, almost, you know? Yeah, a lot of us, see, and a lot of, uh, that's what they're saying, too, a lot of us feel the same way, absolutely. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very strong, unapologetic Christian, but I do <laughs> believe, and when I say unapologetic, I mean, I, I, really truly believe in the creator and i i believe in the infallibility personally of the bible because there's so much of it that's just pure history that it, if to me it has to be so much of it brings true but my point is there's a lot i i know about the spiritual realm i don't understand but i somehow feel like i have a theory based on things yeah. that i've read and people's experiences i believe god could possibly recycle our souls that's my theory. I do and, think that that's a possibility. Right. And I know some people would be like, no, that's blasphemous. But it's like, we right. don't know. We don't really know. And there are we some really exactly. interesting, yeah, there are some really interesting um, scriptural and also like literal historical sort of references yeah. that down the years I've read people that have written about this phenomenon of things happening in the world where uh, sort of like knowledge drops down from whatever you want to call it, from the nether regions into yeah. pockets of the world all at the same time. Right. Phenomenon of like inventions, phenomenon of um, you know advancement, technology, yeah. medicine, whatever it is, right? So yeah. these, it's like the right people in the right place at the right time. Well, that could just be God's intervention of giving us what we need, but it also could be more deep. Yeah. It could be more like the person, the people, and like these people sometimes work so well together. It's almost as if they knew each other and. Were, but I just have I have this neat theory that that's what he does because I'd like to believe that. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what I've chosen to believe. But like, why not? Why not? I don't know. Well, that's the um, thing. I mean, and if you really want to get deep and technical, I mean, like, really kind of, like, delve deep into it, like, you know, we're not given all the books of the Bible either. Yeah, it's something very, yeah, it's interesting. I've read a lot about that down the years. I went to a yeah. private Christian school, and I had a very yeah. traditional upbringing, but I also then went to, uh, went to a private non-religious college, and right. um, I have a lot of people in my family that have written actual seminarian books like they, they publish books that they use in seminary and so I've had yeah. lots of deep conversations and I I oh, think yeah. there's just yeah there's just so much oh there's just so much um but it's like it, it's overwhelming at times um and I had a point I was rambling there for a second I had a point to what I was going to say uh -huh. but yeah I mean I was going to agree with you because like there's so many things that we are not going to understand until we pass and so along the way yeah. it's like we have to exactly. be so you can't really say for sure well no that's not what it is you know just because yeah. we're not really told of it maybe in a lot of the dogma that doesn't there's mean a lot of not. knowledge that's been withheld that's what i was going to say exactly. there, and you're right there's and a lot of knowledge that's been withheld from us yeah well because it has it, it is known that like especially in the early days in the earlier parts of um like christianity and all that stuff like in those earlier parts mm -hmm. that 
the people in power, they kept information yes. from, from the plebes, from the common folk, you know. And in fact, yeah. they actually, there was some parts in some areas of Europe, they actually did not want any common person owning a Bible yes. because they mm -hmm. wanted to tell you what the Bible said. Well, that's where our Reformation was so dangerous because, I mean, um, we all know that it, it, if it wasn't the Catholic Church, it would have been another entity, but people literally haven't been given, you know, that Latin wasn't taught in many cases, so you right. didn't know what was being said in the service, and you couldn't read the Bible because if you didn't speak Latin. So right. that was why it was so, yeah, utterly crazy that, like, throughout, no matter what century you're in, there's a lot of information that you just don't have. So that's oh, yeah. when you have to go on those three things. Like, you have to go on your faith, if you have it, and hopefully you do, because yeah. faith is really important, I think. Yeah. In intuition and 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 education. You have to educate yeah. yourself. You have to have faith. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, have to use your intuition, use that common sense, God-given ability to be able to discern something. And um, yeah. I think that's really important no matter what decade you live in. So, yeah, but yeah it's interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you were asking me earlier when we got on the live stream and some people, you know, I'll go kind of personal because I think it, it's it's the right season to do this. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I lost my father earlier this, uh, early, early in September. Um, and you know, when you lose someone really close to you and they pass away, obviously there's, there's just enormous amount of grief and then practical stuff you have to deal with. But then when you finally kind of slowly come out of that, that just bawling and screaming and yelling and asking God constantly why this person had to go, <laughs> yeah. um, you recognize the little things around you that are really special and, and you start looking for signs of things. And um, yeah. um, dad said before he passed, he could, he was in the hospital and he could sense someone like touching his hand when I wasn't there. And that was really amazing. Cause it kind of just came out at a moment when he was like not being asked, he just sort of said, you know, when you're not here and the nurses aren't here, I know it's not a nurse. Someone touches my yeah. hand. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, some, someone's someone. When I wake up, sometimes I feel like a sensation of someone is holding my hand. And I was yeah. like, so after he passed, I was like genuinely so heartbroken. I was thinking back. I'm like, I think he had an angel with him or a family yeah. member sitting there Very holding awesome. his hand. It's right. So it's like, that's the, the neat part of it. So suddenly like we're in this season of sort of spooky Halloweeny, and you know, to be honest, like there's like skeletons and coffins everywhere. And at first I just thought, Oh God, I can't deal with this. Like, Oh, there's death everywhere. And then yeah. I realized, no, you know what? Part of this is good because we have to be in touch with it. Right. It's a natural part of our life. It's something we got to deal with. But also it started, I started thinking about the positive things of like, well, you know, he's here in my house. I've, yeah. he, he was he was cremated and mom let me you know bring him home because I said I really wasn't ready to let him go yet I don't think she was either so it might sound creepy to some people but he's upstairs and I talk to him <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm hoping yeah. he will haunt my house I want him to haunt my house I've told him I'm there like you're you welcome here like, and signs from dad you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm like you need to like knock something over all right dad I need to know you're here and it's sweet I've had other friends tell me that they've said things like it's not crazy let's say tell him that um, you want him to do something or come and visit, and he'll off, they'll often just be something little, like maybe um, an indication in something every day that they're around. But it's it's like interesting to think about. You know, it it starts making you think really deeply about your belief in in right. whatever it is you believe. But definitely, if you're a Christian or if you were practicing anything, and like your 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 understanding of like the supernatural, and um, it's just really it's just interesting. Uh, just something I've I've never lost. I haven't lost either of my parents until this point and I'm very close with my parents so it was a really really awful thing to experience but um I'm also kind of excited to think like I I, I know from my own experiences from other people that that they, they can communicate somehow I don't know why and I yeah. don't know how but I have a feeling at some point he'll communicate something to me so I I jokingly tell him I'm like okay dad I'm I'm going out make sure you you know Get yeah. some coffee. Go get some coffee. But anyway, I don't know. It might sound crazy, but I'm hoping I'm hoping he talks to me soon. Yeah. So let's see. Well, my because well, my grandmother uh, passed on um, back in 2019, and I actually I have one of her lamps that she always had in her house, and it's mm -hmm. one of those like, touch lamps, but it oh, has yeah. a very kind of old vintage look to it and everything. But it's one of those touch lamps, and I have it. Um, 
on my nightstand up by my bed. And I, so I, I've come home or sometimes I'll just be doing something around my apartment and I'll mm-hmm. see a light on the bedroom and I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, and you know, or yeah. I'll, I'll leave and I'll be gone for the day. Then I'll come home and the lights out. Like she left the light on for me or something, you know. So that's adorable. Like, that's what yeah. I mean. That stuff really happens. The fact now you said it was one of those touch lamps, right? Where the the heat from your touch turns it on. Is that what you were yeah. saying? Yeah. Yes. That doesn't surprise me at all because there's something about the heat and energy whenever there's um a recurring haunting. I don't like the word haunting even. Yeah. I I sometimes like like presence. Um, yes, there's a presence. I yeah, mean, there's a present. Yeah, is spooky, scary. Present right. is just comforting and not spooky, scary. You know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> comforting. Like some people say, when they they do lose a family member, they feel a presence or they have a presence around them. Um, yeah. I want. I once many years ago didn't ask this friend of mine to read me, but she basically I didn't realize that she could sense things, and she was like, "Who's Anna?" And I was like, "What?" She just kind of looked yeah. at me. She's like, "Who's Anna?" And I said. Uh, I like really, I was being totally clueless. I was like, what do you mean? Who's Anna? She's like, there's someone yeah. connected with you and her name is Anna. And I said, oh, that would be my maternal grandmother who I was very close to. Why? And I was still kind of like, what? Why are you asking? And she's like, Anna's with you all the time. And I was like, I, at that point I looked like a deer in the headlights. I was like, uh-huh. really? Okay. And then I thought about it for a second and I was like, you know what? That makes sense because I've always felt that there was something like right. a protective. So she's apparently my protective spirit or whatever, but, um, it doesn't surprise me that your grandmother might leave the light on for you because if she's got energy, yeah. then like to be able to turn on a touch lamp would make so much more sense than even being able to like, um, you know, we know people can turn lights on and off um, just from yeah. energy because people yeah. that's a, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Well, it was, yeah, really awesome talking to you again. It was great. Well, it's have, always awesome to have you on so again. much. I love being on your channel, Tiffany. Thank you for asking me. And I am actually, I really want to get you on my channel, too. I was telling you, I did a quick live stream on my channel before I came on, and I said I'd really like to have you on some others, and I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. So you need to yeah, come over to mine. What's, what's your live stream? Is it, um, cause I know you did something um, in your closet or something, like from your closet. I'm doing, yeah, I'd love to have you on for a collector's closet, because what I'm going to try to do, closet. like, yeah, yeah <laughs> regularly do, like, um, a little, like, fun question and answer on, you know, bringing out pieces from my period collection and then okay. having a guest and we can discuss it and talk about construction and fun I things and just, yeah. just a fun, yeah, fun shitty chat. And, um, and, you know, I think people enjoy that because it's like, you get the best of like costuming plus there's sort of like, I mean, let's be honest, we're all still really isolated a lot these days and it's right. really fun to be able to, um, kind of, yeah do some fun question and answer over something that we're all interested in, but then also just kind of keep it, keep it fun and lively. So that's what I'd like to do at least once yeah. a month through the winter. So I'd love to have you on one of those. I, yeah, I'd love to, you know, definitely let me know when we'll uh, make the schedule. Yeah. Glad you're able to join awesome. us too, Carla. And for those that were only able to catch a little bit of it, um, or that, um, you know, or, you know, people that were only able to catch a little bit or maybe came in late. Um, I will have the replay up um, on <clears throat> my IGTV, Instagram TV, and also eventually uh, then to all of my other platforms like Facebook, YouTube, all of that fun stuff. So, all right. Yes. Well, thank you, Tiffany. It was great. All right. Yes, it was great having you on again. And I'll definitely, we'll have to, do it again. I think what this is like your third time on yeah. <laughs> your third time in the tavern. Yeah, we'll yeah. definitely have to do it again. Have you on a fourth time because all right, you cool. Have such fine and good conversation. I, I I agree, and I think people enjoy them too. Everyone's really sweet, but I think we have a good like kindred spirit bond going on. So we're definitely the the conversation is never like never stilted. Not that it would matter, but I mean we still have fun. But I think oh yeah, absolutely. I think, I think we get on like a house on fire, so you know, cheers to that. <laughs> I knew that there was. I knew that there was a reason why I always visited your tent first at Fort Frederick before I really knew you. So absolutely, yeah. yeah no, you are a fellow kindred spirit, my dear. I'm very glad to know you, and thank you for asking me on for spooky season because this was absolutely fun and it was yeah. a treat for me. I have been moping about a little bit too much, and Daddy wouldn't want that. So thank you for having yeah, me and getting me, that, so. getting me dressed <laughs> up. And um, y'all take care of yourselves. Be careful out there. All right. Yeah. Big cheers to everybody that joined us. All right. And that will join us in the replay. All right. Huzzah. Thank you so Huzzah. much, April.
Thank you, you Tiffany. Have a good weekend. Everybody you too, dear. Have a good weekend too. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Take care, everybody.